Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And as you know, baseball is starting. Real baseball is starting. And that means Stratomatic Leagues are starting. And my Elmwood League is no exception, as you might or might not remember. I have the Providence Grays. That's my team in Elmwood. And we are going to take a look today at my Providence Grays on the precipice of starting the 2021 Elmwood Stratomatic Baseball season. So you can see I've clicked on Providence and we will go to their... Um, first, we're going to go to the uh, Promote Demote page so that you can see... Well, you can see if I get my face out of the way you can see the uh, the the team that I have of course if you're familiar with the Stratomatic baseball game engine you know that the players in white are the activated players and this is going to be everything I'm going over today is going to be to start the season um, the uh, the players in white are the, are the active um, roster players, and the players that are in blue are the players who I have in the minors, at least at the moment. So there are 13 eligible batters and 13 eligible pitchers. Now, new this year, injuries will only be in-game injuries. They won't extend past a game. I'm not really a big uh, proponent of that. I'm not thrilled at all about that idea. Um, so, because uh, I, I think in general it bodes, well, it, it bodes worse for teams that are middle of the pack or below. Because the strong powerhouse teams aren't going to lose their players for any extended period of time. Just in game. And even if they get hit with more injuries than normal or more injuries than other teams get, it still probably won't have too adverse an effect on their, um, their, their league performance because you're only losing those players for the game. So, uh, or the balance of the game. So I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big uh, fan of that, that rule. But anyway, there are the 13, uh, players that I'm, the 13 batters I'm going to keep and the 13 pitchers that I will go into the season with. So we're going to take a look at the lineups. Uh, team, go down to the lineup. And this is the lineup versus lefties. I'll move this over here a little bit. Uh, lead off bat batter and playing second base, you got Joey Wendell. And there's Joey Wendell's card. Uh, second base two. It's got some speed. Can hit. Can get on base a little bit. So he's not a not a bad uh, not a bad second baseman. And he is a product of uh, Westchester University. And it just so happens that my brother Jim is the sports information director at uh, Westchester University. So who knows? Maybe someday we'll have Joey Wendell on the show. I'm hoping. We'll see. The next batter is Timmy Anderson. My shortstop, Tim Anderson. Now, he is going to be brutal, absolutely brutal on left-handed pitching. But he is just pretty good against righties. Sorry, Tim, but that's what I got to say about that. So... But he is a better hitting shortstop than most. Next, we will have Cruz. And, of course, Cruz has a great card no matter who he's batting against. Although it is, again, much better against lefties. Um, but even that, uh, you know, versus righty side is still still pretty good, pretty uh, pretty dangerous. Uh, and he'll be my DH. Then you got Eloy Jimenez. Now, let me tell you, I just did a blockbuster deal on the eve of the, practically on the eve of the season. 
I obtained Eloy Jimenez and uh, the um, Endwell Bird Dogs first round pick in next year's draft for Harper. So, if you'll recall, I used to have Harper, and I loved Harper. I love that guy. But he's only under contract for this season in Elmwood and then next season, and then after that, he's a free agent. Eloy Jimenez is under contract until 2030. So, even though I won't have him in next year's Elmwood League, because he'll probably miss most, if not all, of this season in real life, I will still have him till 2030, so, assuming he comes back okay from that injury, I should be fine. And now I have two first-round picks next year. Next guy is Grichik. And I got, I got Randall Grichik here. Um, he is pretty even against both sides. He's not going to be all that impressive. He's going to hit uh, home runs, but he's not going to hit for a great average. Uh, most of the simulations I've done show that he doesn't hit for a great average, but he will hit maybe in the 30s for homers, I'm hoping. Then I got as Drubal Cabrera at first base. Um, not a great defensive first baseman, but then again in Stratomatic, that really doesn't matter all that much. Um, but... Uh, yeah, and he's not going to hit well either. I mean, he's basically, he's a placeholder. I don't have a better first baseman. I don't have better options. So hopefully in the coming years, I will get a better, better first baseman. Evan Longoria is my third baseman. Uh, that's his card. Uh, he should, uh, I mean, he'll do the job, you know. Probably hit uh, in the 240s. He'll probably hit in the 230s, 240s, because this is basically an all-star league. So, um, And he may hit, get in the 20s for home runs. He should actually get in the 20s for home runs. I'm hoping he does, and, but we'll see. He, and he's also a, a pretty good defensive third baseman. So he is getting on in years, but... This isn't a bad card for uh, for Longoria. Then we got Cody Bellinger. Now, Cody Bellinger had a down year in 2020. Of course, it was a, uh, a shortened season, 60-game season. Um, but uh, we'll, you know, we'll see. I mean, he is a gold glove quality center fielder, and that will help. And he can run. He can steal, you know, that kind of thing. So, he'll help a little bit, and he does have power. But he's not going to hit for average. He's not going to get on base a lot. But, you know, hopefully he has a bounce back year in 2021 for the Dodgers. And then you got Tucker Barnhart is my catcher. Great arm, great defensive catcher, not a good hitter. He's probably going to hit 15-something on that average. Yeah, 15. It says 15 right here. That's probably about what he's going to hit, 12 to 15 home runs in our season and hit about, you know, 210, 205, pretty much like it says on the card. So we'll go to the uh, righty lineup. I'm not going to really – I'm not going to even go into the versus reverse lineups but we'll just touch on the guys that are different um, or maybe the bench players because really all I moved around here was the uh, in the versus righty is the, the the batting order but it's basically all the same guys now on the bench you got Engel he's one of the bench players now the reason I'm not going to start him is because in our league he can't play all year you can see 264 at bats and uh, only nine walks. So I think he falls just short of being able to play the entire year. Um, so that uh, so he's better suited as a defensive replacement, especially since on the corners I'm going to have Jimenez and Grichik, and they're both terrible outfielders defensively. So 
having a guy every game that can come off the bench and he can hit a little bit he's not embarrassing with the bat but having a guy that comes off the bench and won't get you know um all of his uh, usage eaten up really quickly but can come off the bench and play great defense uh for me in a game that i'm leading in would would be would be huge so we got uh michael chavis is going to be my backup uh first baseman and uh left fielder and second baseman blah 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 he's just going to be a backup he's a utility guy not very good um but he had he can he's eligible to play all season so he's a he's a good backup it doesn't matter how often he gets into games uh, well it might because if he gets into a lot of games that's not going to be good for me but um but he can, he can get a lot of at-bats and a lot of pinch hitting and a lot of, you know, playing for guys that get in-game injuries, and he still won't get used up. And then a Daney uh, Hechevaria, Hechevaria, backup shortstop primarily, but he is also, he's actually a much, he's a better uh, second baseman than he is short or third, but basically backup middle infielder. Um, again, we only have in-game injuries, 177 at-bats. Should get him a long way through the season. And then Tony Walters. Tony Walters is the backup catcher. He can also play a little bit of second base, although you don't want to ever see that. But, you know, uh, he's uh, the commensurate backup. I'm hoping for a little better season from him. Uh, this year, I think he's on the Pirates, so I'm hoping he starts for the Pirates. And so that those are the guys that I'm keeping on the, uh, the, the position players that I will be keeping this year. So let's go to the, the uh, pitching rotation. So team, update computer manager, and move it out here so you can see it. So the first guy, our, our ace, our ace is Gosman, and Gosman happened to have had a great year. Oh, okay, I can't get the picture of Gosman, I guess, from here, from this screen. So let's just uh, take a good look at this. It's going to be Gosman, Granke, Clevenger, Kelly, Merrill Kelly, and Hernandez. Eliza Hernandez are my starters, and then we'll come over here. And look at the pitchers. So Gosman, you got Gosman as the uh, the ace, and there's his card. And you can see why he's the ace. Had a really good year. I'm hoping that he's figured out how to pitch. If he has, that'll be great. Right now, he is one of my reserved free agents. We have three reserved free agent spots. We can use them on any three players, but that means basically. When they become free agents, you can still keep them, but only three guys. He's one of the three right now, and if he keeps pitching well in San Francisco, he may remain one of the three. Granke, I got in a deal recently. Um, I needed more starting. I needed better starting pitcher pitching, and I traded Gallo away because I wasn't using Gallo. Gallo had a terrible card, and he's another guy that was going to be either he was would have had to be a reserve free agent this year or next. So he was coming up for free agency. I figured, let me go get Grenke. He's a good starting pitcher. He is old. We'll see how long that lasts, um, you know, how long he is serviceable. I would take, really, I would take what he did this year. I would take that again next year. He wasn't too bad. He was uh, like 124, something like that. I want to say it was like 124, 125 whip. And um, and the 403 earned run average. In fact, let, no, 113. He had a 113 whip. So, yeah, I would take that again. So then you got, um, uh, man, who was it? Uh, Clevenger, yeah, Clevenger in the number three spot for me. Now, Clevenger is going to be limited this year. He pitched 126 innings, but he didn't get to 140. 
to pitch all year in our league, you need 140 innings. So as projected out, he would have pitched 126. However, guys with over 100 innings, but less than 140 can pitch 170 innings under the rules of our league. So we can, I can pitch him for 170. That'll get him to, you know, 21 something, 21 starts. And it'll get me a good way through the season. Then you got Merrill Kelly. Where is he? Let's go see. There he is. Now, he had under 100 innings when projected out. So what that means is he can only pitch the number of projected innings. So he can only pitch 93 innings. That'll only get him just past um, mid-season. So he'll have to be replaced um, just past mid-season. So we'll see how that works. But he's good. He's good, and then we'll, we'll deal with who we have to replace him with. Um, when we get to that time. And then Eliza Hernandez. And you can see Eliza. He was good too. Um, even. So, you know, he's an even pitcher. It's not like he's lopsided. I really don't like lopsided guys. I hate it. So he's pretty good. But again, he only projected to 78 innings. So he can only pitch 78 innings. So he won't even get me to midseason before he'll have to be replaced by somebody. But, but he's good until then. And then, like I said, we'll, we'll take that when we get there. And so we've got some other guys, uh, you know, that can step in as starters um, as the season goes on. I'll touch on a couple of those. Kyle Freeland. Um he started out last year, it looked like he was going to have a really good year, but then he kind of tailed off near the end and finished at a 141 whip. And he's a lefty, so in a 20-team league, a left-hander with a 141 whip, not very good. Don't want to see him pitch very often. Um, what else we got here? Um, hmm. Porcello, Rick Porcello. I'm surprised he isn't on a team right now. If anybody out there has any kind of knowledge, I saw one guy said that Detroit was interested in him, but he's only interested in a multi-year contract, and that's all he wants to sign, which, you know, at this point, can you really be picky? I mean, you had a bad year with the Mets last year. Um, your Cy Young Award winning season is getting further and further back in the rearview mirror. So I, I don't know why he thinks he can demand a, a multi-year contract. Maybe somebody's going to be desperate enough that they will give him a multi-year contract, but based on what he did with the Mets last year, I wouldn't plan on it. So anyway, and yeah, you don't want him pitching a lot for you. Uh, 151 whip and a 564 earned run average. Then we got Garrett Richards, who right now is on the Boston Red Sox. Looking forward to him hopefully having a better year with the Red Sox than he had last year in real life. Although last year in real life, for this, you know, whatever, in the, uh, in the shortened season, he had a 125 whip. So really, I mean, I guess I, I, would, I would take that. I'd take that again, especially as a full year starter. Um, he projects to 153 innings. He could pitch all year for me. It's just that the other guys are better, and I want to get make sure that I get the maximum number of games out of the better pitchers, Kelly, uh, Merrill Kelly, and um, and Eliza Hernandez before I go to Garrett Richards. And then. Uh, and that's about it. And then, you know, you've got the bullpen. you got some really great guys out there in the bullpen. Lucas Sims, guy has a monster card. He'll probably be my, uh, actually, he's going to be one of my setup men. He's not going to be the closer. Um, because he can pitch all year for me. Generally, I want to make my closer a good relief pitcher, but 
a guy that can't pitch all year that's limited in his innings because then I only have to bring him in once, you know, every whatever, whenever, like I'm only up by one or two runs. It'll only be certain situations when he comes in. And that's the best use of a guy with limited innings. And so it's better to have Sims as my, uh, Lucas Sims as my, one of my setup guys. Um, Scrubs, I want to, the Scrubs has an interesting card. That guy has walks everywhere. And especially against, um, especially against righties, it's like all he gives up is a walk. Now there's a lot of them, so it's not a good thing, but it, it's kind of an interesting card. Against lefties, he's not actually not too bad. Had a 190 earned run average. And that's something you're going to notice about these cards. Um, one of the guys in the league and I were talking about this. you got guys with great ERAs, but then you look at their cards and you're like, this is, you know, you look at Scrubs and you say, he's not, that's not a 190 earned run average. Um, Tommy Hunter, I made a trade to get him too. Going to pitch him mainly against righties. I'm going to have him set up in the pitcher logic lines to be a practically, you know, really only righty or face only face righties because his versus lefty card is a little worse. So let's take a look at that. Um, team, let's see. Let me get, let me get myself out of the way here. Team, update computer manager. And then we'll bring this over here. Um, and so you can see I've got Chris, yeah, Chris Matt. As you can see, he only projects to 24 innings. He still will use that up before the season's over, but he um, he's only going to pitch in, you know, games where I have a one to two run lead in only the ninth inning. And the way I'm going to try to make sure of that is by using the, the pitcher logic line I've got here. And you can see this is my closer line. And with the score, I'm up by one to two with from 25 to 27 outs. And Chris Matt is at the top. Lucas Sims would be the second guy to grab if Chris Matt were taken out, then Fry, then Yasmero, Petit, etc. And then you've got the setup line, the setup one line, and this is the setup line against lefties, I believe. Uh, yeah, this is the setup line against lefties. And then you've got the setup two line, which is the setup line against um, uh, righties. And so there's, you know, there's that. Um, uh, I have other videos that I think explain how to set up the pitcher logic line if you are uh, not well versed in how to do that. But anyway, that was a look at my, uh, a, a pretty in-depth look at my uh, Providence Grays. I didn't go over a lot of the guys on the bench. I didn't go over a lot of the guys on the in the bullpen because we are coming down to you know almost 30 minutes on the video. So I didn't want to bore everybody to sleep. And um, but that's what we got going into this year. I think we're going to win probably. Like I said, the, the league is basically an all-star league. So I'm expecting the team to win somewhere in the low 80s probably miss the playoffs but you never know if we if our players you know if i get exceedingly good roles and our players outperform their cards or a lot of the players outperform their cards maybe cruz hits 70 home runs i have seen quick sims where he hits 70 homers if something like that happens who knows maybe we're off to the races but probably we're going to win in the very high 70s or low 80s. Missed the playoffs, but that's fine. You know, I'm going to have two draft picks in next year's draft. And I got all these guys that we just went over, most of which I can keep again next year. And hopefully guys like Gosman have figured it out and will be good going forward. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Give me a thumbs up, like, you know, like the video, leave a comment below, 
Let me know what you think of my team, my prospects for this year. If you haven't subscribed to the channels, go ahead and subscribe. Doesn't cost you anything. I'm starting to take off. I'm taking off. And you want to be on that ride. So anyway, that, but otherwise, that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.